everyone and welcome to today's episode. Today we're going to be making a very fun fruit cake that isn't like your traditional holiday fruit cake that you're used to seeing around Christmas time. Uh, this is more on the tart side and we've got cranberries and oranges, dates and walnuts that are included in the mixture. So I think that you're really going to like it and this is a wonderful after dinner treat for your backyard barbecues and stuff. This makes a wonderful addition to your menu. Uh, we've got cranberries and oranges and walnuts and dates that are all mixed into this recipe. So this makes a really nice dessert during the spring and summer times for when you're grilling out and whatnot. This makes a wonderful, wonderful dessert. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm going to mix all of my dry ingredients in my mixer. And I've got all of my ingredients already portioned out and all of the ingredients and the directions for this recipe is in the description below. So I'm going to mix all of my dry ingredients together. I'm going to go slow so it doesn't puff up at me. And that was all of my dry ingredients. This sugar is going to be used for the glaze with the orange juice. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to slowly mix this together. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was my speed. That was my locking it down. That's why I was going really slow. Now what I'm going to do in a separate bowl is mix all of my wet ingredients. So that's going to be my buttermilk, my oil, and my eggs. Now I'm going to give this a good mix. And I just kept that on the lowest setting while I'm mixing this. It's totally fine. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oranges and I'm going to zest them into my dry mix. Actually, I'm gonna take off the, the beer attachment so that I have more room. And you're gonna do the zest of two oranges. Oh, this orange zest is amazing. And you gotta be careful to not get the graters on your fingers because you will have a skinned up finger and um, <laughs> it is not forgiving, let me tell ya. Speaking from experience. And we have our naked orange there with orange zest all over my countertop. I don't know if you can see that, but it's everywhere. That looks good. So I'm gonna set off my oranges to the side. We're not gonna be using those anymore, but hey, you've got an after after lunch snack. Got a nice little orange. So now that I've got my orange zest in there, I'm going to mix my cranberries, my dates, and my walnuts. So I, this is a six ounce bag, and I'm just gonna add the whole thing. Now this is kind of your personal preference. I say a cup, which this is a little bit over a cup, but I'm not, I'm gonna be wasteful because I don't necessarily eat cranberries just by themselves. So you can put anywhere from a cup to the entire little portion, which is about a cup and a quarter, I guess. And my walnuts, and these are, this is gonna be one cup of chopped walnuts. That's exactly, this is. And on these, it says one cup really, you know, when you're looking at those big bags in the baking aisle, most of the time they tell you exactly how much is on there. So that really does help. So this is, I think the reason why I like this cake so much is because there's not a whole bunch of cake. It's more like a bread. It's really good. Um, so whenever you take out the, the dates, they're vacuum sealed together and it's actually really cool to kind of watch it expand and it's kind of weird because they all they all like stick together but when you start breaking them apart they kind of like the package just kind of goes back <laughs> to its original form I guess. So I'm just gonna plop this whole thing right in there. And then I'm gonna mix this together. So I'm gonna add my attachment back on here. And after this is well blended, I'm gonna add the wet ingredients. Oh, just kidding. Heavenly. Okay, so now that I still have this on low speed, I'm gonna add my wet ingredients now. Slowly. You can start to hear it kind of bog, I guess. That's what I'm calling it. So you just slowly just increase the speed and let it mix really well. Okay, so now that that is mixed really well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grease my pan. So I've got two of the larger loaf pans and then I've got two really small little mini loaf pans. 
and I'm gonna spray all of it and this should work and fit all of it. And you're just gonna do this like you would a regular cake pan. Do it about half to three quarters full. Make sure you spray all of your sides really well, as well as the bottom. And this is really thick. So, because it's got nuts and cranberries and the whole deal in there. So this is this is actually like a really heavy cake. Or like I said, this is it's a fruit cake, but it's more of like a bread. Alright, now that that's clean. I'm gonna can you see that? Y'all. It's pretty thick. So I'm gonna pour it right into my pans and you can kind of see that I have left about a half inch from the top. So I mean, that's a pretty full pan there. This is gonna be so good. Now I might only have enough to do just one little loaf pan. We'll see. Yeah, I'm only gonna have enough to do one. This is my grandma's recipe. This is special because this is a lot different than the fruit cake that you typically see around the holidays with the candied, I call them candied cherries or whatever they are. I think that's disgusting. Oh, just bleh, gross. Now that all of this is in the pans, now we're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for one hour. So I'm gonna go put that in the oven and then we're gonna bring them out eventually. So now that we have our batter already in our pans. I'm gonna bake this at 350 degrees for one hour. And during that time, closer to the time that we're gonna take it out, so maybe at about 15 minutes left remaining, we're gonna mix our orange juice with our sugar and we're gonna make a glaze and we're gonna heat that in the saucepan over low heat and that way it kind of creates a glaze and you're gonna pour it on there while the cake is still warm. So here I go putting it in the oven. Okay, so I just took our fruit cake out of the oven and it's still a little warm, which is the reason I've got this on a cooling grid so that the bottom of the pan doesn't get too, too hot with our glaze that's gonna go over the top. And what the glaze is made of is one cup of sugar and one cup of orange juice mixed together, heated over a medium, medium high heat. I don't keep it on medium high the entire time. I kind of start it off slow on medium, I whisk it together, and then towards the end, and I stand there the whole time. Um, you don't have to whisk it the whole time, but I do stand there to make sure that it's not burning or sticking on the bottom. Um, and this is still warm, so what you do is you just divide it evenly. You can start to see it come up a little bit when you start to pour it, and you just gotta do this slowly because it will soak into the cake. So I always recommend making this about 24 hours before you're ready to serve it so that that glaze has plenty of time to soak into that cake. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. And so I'm just gonna start pouring slowly. And then whenever you see it come through the top, just go on to the next one. And I like to make sure that the top is coated. I'm gonna have a little bit left over, but it makes a really pretty glaze right on top of that cake. So I'm gonna go miss a couple little spots on this first one. Uh, I'm just gonna have to have some of this left over. Um, it's just a little bit left. Um, so what you do is you just let this set out. Um, you can cover it once it's completely cooled. Um, just cover it with either saran wrap or if you have the plastic lids that go on top of these uh, loaf pans Go ahead and cover it since it's cool and then you can pop it in the fridge and let it chill there overnight So yeah, you're gonna want to refrigerate these for about 24 hours before you're serving it and that way Like I said, it soaks all the way in and you cut it and it stays really moist So this cake is going to be Amazing and like I said, this is great to do during the spring and summertime because it is kind of zesty and you've got those fresh fruits that you're using in there like cranberries 
and orange zest so that's really gonna bring out a really good summer flavor well guys here is the finished product from today's episode we've got two really large loaf pans full of fruitcake and a really small one for gifting uh, these freeze very well so if you wrap them a couple times in saran wrap and pop it in the freezer Take it out a little bit before you're gonna serve it at a holiday or a birthday party or whatever you're celebrating. This makes a wonderful, wonderful treat and I'm sure your guests are gonna love it. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon for more Sugar Ball Cake videos.